I know you do. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I'm an ex-Muslim. So I know what I'm talking about. Muhammad had no guarantee, had no assurance of knowing whether he was going to make it into heaven. The reason why we say that he is the Messiah, that he's coming to this world to save us from our sins, because him alone, Christ, right, or God alone had to save us. Sin has actually been transferred. It's been passed down from generation to generation. All of us are sinners, man. Look at your own life. There's things that you wouldn't want to show other people. You wouldn't want to tell, God bless you, of what you know is going on inside. But God knows everything, right? So that is why we are we are faulty in the sight of God. But it's not the same God, and I'll tell you why it's not the same God. Every single religion has a specific identity to give to that God, and so you know what this makes that it makes it biased, it makes it very subjective because you and I know, let's face it, that there's only one God and he has an absolute personality that belongs to him and you cannot destroy that personality, you cannot tame it and so if that were the case then why do we have 40,000 religions out there? but guess what, God who we don't see has come to us because if God is invisible, if God is greater than anything that we know if God is beyond and above our thoughts, if God is to be trusted although we don't see him we still have to build a relationship with him but you see, that is intently why Jesus came down from the Father to represent God, to manifest the glory of God who we don't see, so we can have a relationship with God. You can't know someone on the basis of not seeing them. If you see them, and if you have a relationship with them, thus, you can know them more. Yeah, but it's not just a feeling. Did you know that atheists have feelings as well? Did, did you know that Buddhists actually feel a certain way when they, you know, do mantras? Uh, when they seek to attain that nirvana, for example, that highest apex of spiritual, you know, awakening. Every single religion tells you that it's all about, you know, the inside, that's where it flows from, and then it starts there, and then, you know, it moves to the outside. But Jesus tells us that He did everything on the cross, right? So man would not glory, take the glory uh, uh, for himself. The Bible says, for we are saved by grace, through faith alone, not our own works, lest we boast, because God knows that we are proudful. As human beings, right we have pride inside of our hearts and so so no man would take the glory for himself they need to actually revert to Christ they need to you know go back to the Lord they have to turn to Christ's finished work on the cross him and him alone so they can be saved that is why Christ said if you believe in me and are baptized then you shall be saved outside of Christ there's no salvation brother for there's only one name under heaven whereby man could call upon to be saved and that is the name of Christ Jesus there's no higher name there's no higher principality Christ is the highest principality and he was exalted to be the name above every other name and to him all men will bow down uh, for me if you have uh, uh, an information about the Muslim can, can you come closer if you have uh, no information about the Muslim religion we, we don't believe in Jesus you know we believe about the Prophet Muhammad you heard about it, but I'm an ex-Muslim, so I can tell you something about it. Yeah, why you think the way, why you changed from Muslim to other religion you're talking about? Well, that's the issue that I have with religion is that, you know, religion tells you that you have to stick to it just because you've been groomed this way or you've been, you know, thought to actually uh, grow in, a, in, 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 in such and such religion, right? But the way I see it is that if we are to connect to God, if we were to have a relationship with the Lord, it's surely not, it's certainly not religion. It has to be something outside of religion. Because every person, you know, in religion tells you that they have their own way of doing it. And that it's through mantras and rituals and rites. And for me, it made no sense at all. Because if I'm going to connect to God, I want to connect to Him, not through mantras, not through five prayers a day, for example, not through the do's and the don'ts, but I, the way I want to connect to God is most importantly, you know, in, in, in truth and yeah. in through the spirit. And so that's something that, you know, Christianity offers that no other religion out there ever offers, which is that we are able to connect to God by, through the heart. Yeah, sure. Right? And so what's the need of actually praying five times a day, right? Or calling yourself like, you know, part of that, that denomination or, or part of that sect or that religion if it's all about, you know, uh, the do's and the, the, the not do's, right? It, it doesn't make sense for me. 
And I'll tell you something else. You know, you're a sinner today. Can you admit that? Uh, you can explain more for me. Have you ever lied? Have you ever said a lie? Yeah, sure. Okay. So we, what, what, what does it make you? We are, we're not perfect. So what does that make you? Uh, a liar. A liar, right? So you're a liar. Okay. I'm and, not. Well, I mean, not. you just... But, but sometimes we do wrong things. But we try always to develop... I get it. And so you just answer my question. So a lot, all of us have broken the Ten Commandments of God. If you're familiar with the Ten Commandments of God, right? It says, don't lie, don't commit adultery, don't covet your neighbor's uh, uh, belongings, for example. But hear me out for a minute. So, so you just acknowledge that if you say a lie, that makes you a liar, right? And when I call you a liar, then you actually lied about it. Because again... You know, when you lie, that makes you a liar. So technically, all of us have lied, and I'm not I'm not condemning you by the way. I'm just yeah, saying that that's the nature that's the nature of men. Yeah. Right. The, that's the, the nature of the human. Exactly. Not only the so man. all of us are under that 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 reality that we actually lie, and that we're born with something that is called you know sin. Okay. And sin is what actually causes you know the things that we do that God does not agree with, that God is in complete disagreement with. However, we don't have to stay there. We can actually move out from that place. And truth be told, we can actually be set free, right? And so that is what Christ came, you know, seeking to do. He came to redeem us from our own selves. He came to set us free from our sins. He came to, to seek and save the lost. Because in and, of yourself, in, of, in and of yourself, you cannot be set free. In and of myself, I cannot be set free. Why? Because there's no good in you apart from the good that God instills in you. And so if you're going to try to find a solution in you, when the problem lies there explicitly, then you're in a miserable state of mind and heart. That is why you need someone that is perfect to save you. But guess what? Islam does not recognize Jesus as uh, the Son of God or even you know, being perfect or being infallible. The reason why we say that he is the Messiah, and that he's coming to this world to save us from our sins, because him alone, Christ, right, or God alone had to save us from our sins, because God alone is perfect. But Christ is intently the image of God. He is intently the expression of the glory of God, manifested to us, perfect in all of His ways, and Him alone could die and, and, and take away from our sins. Religion does not do that. It, it, neither does it deal with the problem of sin, to be honest to you. So that is why Christ makes sense for me. Because religion is always going to tell you, do, do, do. But if the problem lies inside of you, man, right? If the problem is like someone has cancer, right? If they have cancer, you want to give them the cure. If they have cancer, how, they can, how can they find it in their own body to fight, you know, cancer, to go against cancer and destroy the dysfunctional cells and, you know, everything that is going on in their immune system. Unless, you know, it's an outside cure that heals them from the inside. And so that's why we need an outside cure and his name is Jesus Christ. And that is expressly why Jesus is called the Son of God, the Messiah, the, the Savior of the world. And, and Islam sees him only as a prophet. And I see a problem with that because he was never a prophet. Or just a prophet at least. He was more than a prophet. I respect your point of view, but for me, uh, everyone don't have to lie. I don't have to hurt you or to hurt anybody else. Yeah. And, uh, but you, but your 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 religion. I but I love that because you're a good human being, and it it turns that it, like it's it seems to me that you're you have better standards than your own religion. You, you have to be a human before following your religion you know you can be you can be following any religion and uh, you can pray you do anything but you can be at the same time a good guy inside i get it but goodness is not going to save your soul that's the problem is that even atheists are good there's a lot of good human beings out there right but hear me out i i i get your point there are good people out there and they don't have to be following after religion so what's the point of actually chasing down a religion if you're a good person you know to start with so what i'm trying to say is that this is not even at this point it's not about like whether you're a good person or not this is about saving your soul from damnation from hellfire because i'll tell you one thing when you compare yourself to someone else right and that's what usually people do here in this world is that they compare each other to one another and so some people will come across like okay i'm a better person than this other person so they can pat themselves on the back and go like oh you know this person is murdered i've never murdered i've just said lies so i'm good but here's what the Bible tells us, is that when we compare ourselves to God who has a standard of, of righteousness that is just so above and beyond, right, the righteousness of man, we all fall short of the glory of God, you and I included. 
altogether, we have come short of the glory of God. That is why the Bible says when God looks upon the children of men, he sees none that is righteous. Every man is guilty. They're guilty of sinning. And because God is just, he will have to punish us. But instead of punishing us, because he loves us that much, he's reaching down to us every day, to people, right? To uh, 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 messengers, to preachers. And he has also preached, he's reached down most importantly to us through Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago, who's come to save us from ourselves. He's come to redeem us from our sins and reconcile us back to the Father. My friend, religion does not deal with that. Religion tells you that if you sin today, you can run back to God and God will forgive you on the spot. Where is the justice of God in this? If God is just and he has a moral conduct for himself, right? He must judge every person the same way because he's not a respecter of person. He cannot judge people better than others. He must judge every person on the basis of what they have done in the flesh. And so if that is the case, you and I have sinned. We've said lies. We have done things in life which go against the Ten Commandments of God. And so God has to punish us. The wrath of God will inevitably fall on us. But yet, in His mercy, God sent Himself down, right? He came down in the likeness of man died on the cross, took upon himself our sins and gave us his righteousness. So if we believe in him, we are completely saved. And this is for you. This is a message that God had meant for you to hear today because that's how much he loves you. Because otherwise you wouldn't be here. Yes, of course you can. Okay, you believe in something. I believe in something. Um, this girl, she don't That's my, that's my wife, yeah. Your wife, she don't believe in anything, yeah. you know? But she can be a good human, she helps people and she do anything good. Yeah. And she don't believe it. But you believe But what is good? I don't know. She she can help people, she don't hurt anybody. Okay. But she can go to paradise with, with <laughs> But why do you why do you then follow after religion? If that's the case, once again let me reiterate what I said earlier. I said if that's the case and we can simply be good in this in this life that God gives us. Let's say we live up to seventy years old. Yeah, Seven but, years, but. right? What's the point of being good, right? What's the point of being good and then dying without your Messiah? What's the point of dying without Jesus Christ? If there, if the truth of the gospel, all right, if the truth of the gospel is true, all right, if that's the truth that you must believe in, whether you think that you're a good person or not, it's not going to make a difference if you reject Jesus Christ. The Bible says if we don't have the Son, right, which is Jesus, we don't have the Father. Now, according to what you're saying earlier, everybody is good, everybody is done good. Now, once again, let me reiterate what I said earlier. When you compare yourself to other people, you can come off as a good person. But now, when you compare yourself to God who's perfect, can you at least agree that you, that you fall short on, on these terms? Can you agree that you fall short on these terms when you compare yourself to God who's perfect and holy? But the, no, no, no. But I'm asking you a question here. I'm saying, listen, forget about comparing yourself to people, all right? Because that's not going to work. I'm saying, instead, if you turn on your heels, all right, and now compare yourself to God who's perfect in all of his ways, can you agree, right, to the least of the degrees that you're going to fall short of God? Uh, to be honest, I don't compare myself with God. Why not? And I believe that he's the creator of anything in me. That's my point of view. I get it. <laughs> but once again, all right, listen. I'm just going to shake your hand on this. I'm just going to pray for you, bro. Jesus alone can save you. Religion is not going to save you. I'm telling you this because I have experienced the goodness of God through Jesus Christ. I know that I'm saved. I know that I'm a child of God. Outside of Jesus, there is no hope for humanity. There is no hope for salvation. I believe in the prophet Muhammad. I know you do. But Muhammad is dead. Would you agree? Yeah, he's dead. All right, where is he right now? Well, Muhammad never said he was going to go to paradise. He's waiting for us. Is he? We are waiting for the hour when okay. the world ends, right? So why did Muhammad? Why did Muhammad and, say then in and, that case that and, he did not? And he will meet us. Okay. In that day, uh, to enter to Jannah. Okay. So so why does Muhammad also say in different different other places that he has no guarantee of making it to heaven? No, 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 I'm telling you, I'm an ex-Muslim, so I know what I'm talking about. Muhammad had no guarantee, he had no assurance of knowing whether he was going to make it into heaven or hellfire. Even Aisha said it, it's in your hadith, it's everywhere. He said it out of his own words, right? So, if your own prophet does not have assurance of going to heaven, why would you, who's supposed to be 
lesser than your profit have any type of assurance yeah. at all. Okay, can I ask you some question? Yeah, sure. Uh, the Prophet Muhammad, who is, uh, who's the people who's not going to, to heaven? Who's, who's not going to heaven? Yeah, the Christians and the Jews. For you. The Christians and the Jews, according to the Quran, they're not going to heaven. No. Well, Muslims will seemingly go to heaven, but interestingly enough, there's another pastor that says that Muslims, out of the words of your own God, it says that Muslims will have to go through hell first. They'll be on, your, on their knees first. And then maybe, you know, once Allah does the filtering out, some of them will be sent to heaven and some others will be in hell and they'll have to, you know, pay for their sins. And then maybe, you know, after they could be sent back to heaven. Yeah, Did you know that or not? Even Muslims too. The bad, the bad ones, the bad people, uh -huh. they're going to pay for that, you know? All right. But, so what does it tell you? There's no guarantee but, for anybody. But, uh, but even someone from other religion, if he's a good human, he will go to heaven. Yeah. He don't have to be, that's he's not, not true. obligated to be Muslim. That's not know? true because if the Muslims themselves, that's what the Quran says, have no assurance of making it directly into heaven and that they'll have to pass through a trial, which is first, number one, right? Going to hell and getting on their knees there, submitting to Allah in hell, having to suffer in hell first, and then maybe, just maybe, right? Big, huge question mark. They'll make it back into heaven afterwards once they, once they pay off for their sins, right? Like purgatory, like the Catholics have, right? So if that is the case with the Muslims, then imagine how much more shall that be wor uh, uh, worse with the with the uh, Christians and the Jews. And I, I, I know this for a fact because I've read your religion. I, I was a Muslim back then. What I would encourage you to do is read through your Quran and your Hadith and go find out about the contradictions that lie there. Because if I left Islam in the first place because of reading the Quran. And when I read the Quran, I came to the conclusion that, you know, that couldn't make any sense because if God was true and if God was righteous, if God was perfect, then he would certainly not be the God of the Quran. And I say this out of love, and I say this not with no, condemnation, no, no, no. but because I want to see your soul snatch out of hell. Exactly. I respect so, your point of view like you respect I respect you as a person, but I don't respect your religion. You know why? Because if your religion is false, then your religion is sending you straight to hell. And I say this out of love. If you have the, if, let's say you have the cure, right? If, if you were to give the cure to someone, all right? And that person rejected that cure. Wouldn't that make you sad? That you have a cure for a disease. Suppose you have a disease, right? And you've got a cure, you can heal them. Or let's say, you know, your loved ones are about to get into a burning house. And as they're about to get into, into that burning house, you see them about to actually die. And you run, you know, you chase them down to snatch them out of that burning house, right? Would that be okay or not? Yeah. All right, so that's exactly what I'm doing here. We're standing here, free of charge, preaching the gospel, right? No one forces us to come out because we want to see people saved. We want to see the lost souls that are damned, right, to eternal hell be snatched out of the hands or the clutches of Satan because we want them to have a relationship with the Lord because only the Lord Jesus Christ can save them. And if that, is, if, that is, if that is true, then I would encourage to just ask God to manifest himself to you. Let him, just ask him, you've got nothing to lose. Reveal yourself to me and God will give you a sign. Tell him, listen, that, whatever, whatever, whatever that man was saying, he did. But that was Jesus giving you signs all along, right? You see, he's giving you another sign. You're, sta you're, standing, having, you're standing here having a conversation with me. I really believe in God and he gave me signs. And I respect you like I respect your mama. mama Thank you. Like I respect everyone. All right, that's awesome. Even if you respect, I respect you back, but I've got nothing right. against you. Like I respect myself. However, I don't respect your religion. That's it. I, I don't respect your religion because I love you this much. Because your soul, in my opinion, has a price for it. And, and that soul, I wouldn't want it to be separated from God forever and ever. I, I, I would want your soul to be redeemed. I would want your soul to be saved, brother. And there's no salvation outside of Jesus Christ. And God so loves you that even today, right, He's still knocking on the door of your heart. He's still reaching out to you, bro. So, yeah, that's basically what it is, all right? What's your name, by the way? Ibrahim. Ibrahim, are you uh, Persian? Tunisian. Wow, man, I would have never guessed you've got uh, the Persian look, <laughs> Persian features. Hey, can we give you uh, our business card? Maybe we can stay in touch with you. Yeah, yeah just good. hit me up, man, sometimes. You know, we'll no, give you a... No, 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 no. I got one. You got one? Yeah. A card? Yeah. No, you got a tract. Oh, okay. 
Okay. Here's my card. That's, yeah, that's our personal number. That's my personal number. Okay. I would love to link up with we you. We can bro. be friends. We of can course. Get coffee if you of want. course. God bless you, man. I love you, man. Right? I hope I didn't ruffle your feathers too much.